here you're a man of routine that you eat the same breakfast every morning. And I hear there are these uh, oatmeal cream pies. Two now, of them. Two of them. You have two yeah. every morning. So two coach. every morning. Part of my motivation for getting up in the morning is I love to have a cup of coffee and two Debbie cookies every day. And when I don't have them, I'm cranky. Come on, Nick Perry, get your elbow up and throw the ball. What'd you do when you were a kid? Play Nintendo? What are we doing? Your hands are back here, man. Might as well stick them up your You mentioned Bryce being the guy right now. How happy are you that he's I just said Bryce is going to play with the ones, all right? So that's the way it's going to be. How happy are you that he's been able to kind of progress the way he has been? And do you find he's more confident now? Well, how do you know that he's progressed the way he has been? What have you seen that be able to make that statement, first of all? I mean, I'm happy with his progress. I don't want you to think that, but I, I, I just want, I don't know where you sort of can just come out and make that statement. But I'm Wait. happy with his progress. I think he's played well this spring. I think he showed good leadership. Uh, he's made progress. Uh, I think he understands the offense. He's worked hard. Um, so, you know, I can make the statement because I watch him practice every day, but I don't know how much practice you saw. I was going to ask uh, your friend Jimbo said yesterday that um, at some point while you're in Tuscaloosa, he was going to beat your butt. That wasn't the word that he used, but did you have any response for that? In golf? <laughs> I think he, I think he meant ball. on the football field. <laughs> well, I'm sure there will come a day, you know. But uh, is that what he's talking about? That football? He, he, was talking, he was talking about football. He was? Well, he used to be on my noontime basketball league, I guess. You know, we're no longer partners, yeah. you know, when it comes to that. All the way through. All the way through. That's it. Good. Good effort, Ronnie. All right, but I just have one question. If you run the last one faster than you ran the other five, what's holding you back? Hi. If you ran the last one faster than you ran the other five, what's holding you back? Your talent is your greatest nemesis when it comes to your mindset, especially the young guys here who have talent. I, you've always been the best player on your team, and now all of a sudden, you got to pay attention to detail and compete with people, and you don't really know how. So you can learn how. It's a choice. It's a decision that everybody can make. Don't let your talent be your nemesis. You guys gave us a lot of really positive rat poison. The rat poison that you usually give us is usually fatal. <laughs> but the rat poison that you put out there this week was yummy. <laughs> Some guys ask me in the league, they be like, man, how was it? You know, everybody, I know y'all two on your teams, they like, how was Alabama? Like, how was it like? How, what's, what's, what, yeah. what, what, what's Coach Saban like? What's Nick Saban like? Everybody so they respect it and they want to know what's going on about it. And I tell them all, I said, listen, if you can play, you're going to play. Look. You gotta, be, you gotta be accountable. You gotta, like, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't, if you're not gonna listen, you're not gonna be in the right spot every time and things like that. And to be accountable to do your job properly, you ain't gonna play. You know what I'm saying? That's a testament to your brother because if you don't do your job, he can't do his job. He learned well. You know what well. I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I said, it don't matter if you're a freshman, senior, whatever. If you can, if you can ball, you can ball, but you got also gotta be accountable. Like poison, like rat poison. How's everybody today? How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing well? Questions? Can we get in the line and everybody ask the question? When you ask me those kind of questions, it really pisses me off. If you want to know the truth about it, it pisses me off. I don't even know what you asked me, but I just wanted to say that. Don't ask me any more questions about this. You can ask the bottle, but don't ask me. Now, you all scared to ask another question? You sure you want to ask? You better make it a good one now, because I'm about half fired up here. They run through our ass like through a tin horn, man, and we could not stop them. Just create some s*** and throw it on the wall and see what sticks. I, I could give a about all that. Excuse my French. I'm really upset that I use bad language. I'm sorry. Why would you ask me? Well, how the hell do you know they're going to get to play? I don't even know why we play. Where'd you come up with that? Just, you know, had a dream about it or what? You guys got all these conclusions already drawn. It's been a while. I've almost been in a state of depression not being able to see y'all. There's a couple of them that can really imitate me. You know, he, he can talk just like me give speeches just like I give them. Hey guys, yeah! we, got, we got a 
got a lot of guys here. You, you come to practice and you don't make weight. And you tell me you don't eat anything. Well, I know the air ain't got calories, guys. Let me tell you this. It's about being a champion. I've seen bits and pieces of it. You know, he doesn't like to do it in front of me too much. Today's practice was awful. And I'm going to tell you this. The day I can't get you guys to do it right, I'm going to go to the lake, sit on the ducks, and watch the ducks s*** the yard. <laughs> Tell our players all the time, the two most compelling words in the draft report is and and but. All right, so they read the player, and I'll take a defensive back. All right, he's got quick feet, change of direction, yeah, good long speed, can play man-to-man. -man. He's a good tackler. He's got toughness. He's got really good ball judgment and really good ball skills. And he's a good person. He was a leader on the team. He graduated from school. Coaches loved him. Read the same player. But he had a positive drug test. Uh, he had a domestic violence incident with his girlfriend. He got in a fight to borrow when he was a freshman. You don't realize that as soon as you apply for a job, as soon as you put your name in for the draft, people are looking for reasons not to pick you. They're looking for reasons not to hire you. So don't give anybody a reason to say but. You know, there, there's always a lot of criticism out there when somebody does something wrong, everybody wants to know how you're going to punish the guy. All right? But there's not enough for 19 and 20 year old kids, people out there saying, why don't you give them another chance? All right, so I'm going to give a speech right now about this. Like, where do you want them to be? Guy makes a mistake. Where, where, where do you want them to be? You want them to be in the street? Or do you want them to be here graduating? You know, when I was over there at the Nagurski, Musin Muhammad, who played 15 years for the Carolina Panthers, played for me at Michigan State. Everybody in the school, every newspaper guy, everybody was killing a guy because he got in trouble and said there's no way he should be on our team. I didn't kick him off the team. I suspended him. I made him do stuff. For Michigan State, he played 15 years in the league. All right, he's a president of a company now, and he has seven children, and his oldest daughter goes to Princeton. So who was right? I feel strong about this now, really strong, all right, about all the criticism out there of every guy that's 19 years old that makes a mistake, and you all kill him. And then some people won't stand up for him. So my question to you is, where do you want him to be? You want to condemn them to a life sentence? Or do you want the guy to have his children going to Princeton? You want to close on that or we want to just... I got new shoes that are hurting my feet. I, when they start hurting my feet, then I'm going to get cranky, so then I'm going to have to get on somebody's ass. My foot's killing me. I can't get a new pair of shoes. Yes, sir. We put that. Deep Can I have a drink? Yes, sir. I thought they were going to give me some Propel or something, they said. See, he's got Propel. What, what do I have to do to get one of those? I mean, the wrong size shoes, wrong drink. We're trying to find something you can do. What, what, tell me what you can do. You been missing? I know, I, I, I got lonely up there looking at all them non-skill guys. I don't fit in with them guys. I, I didn't tell you about my spring I put in my hip, right? You what? When they put, gave me a new hip, I had them put a spring in there. Okay. I, so you talk about explosive. <laughs> I got a thing. I mean, and, and if I near leg, near shoulder, that's really bad. All I have to do is wind it up. I got a little thing right here. They don't make them like they used to, Smitty, and ain't many of us left. Our goal is to have the kind of team that nobody wants to play. 
And that means that we have to impose our will. Uh, you got to be tougher than everybody that we play. Sometimes the only way to develop, you know, the kind of mental toughness and discipline is you have to be able to overcome hard. But you got to push yourself, man. You can't give in to it. You got to keep pushing yourself even when you get tired, even when you feel like you can't go. All right, that's when you take the next step. It's not really about what you want. It's about what you're willing to do to get it. You won a national championship with, with Nick in 2003 at LSU. How long do you think after that victory he really enjoyed it or just said, all right, we got to get to recruiting now and on to the next year? I mean, do you think he can smell the roses? I don't think so. I, I've heard the stories at Alabama about him uh, on the flight home, chewing the coaches out about recruiting, and I don't doubt it one bit. So, uh, you know, that's that's his, his mentality. I think he enjoyed that one a little more just because – that was his first one. But I'll never forget in our ring ceremony when they gave us our rings, uh, he told us in a not very nice way what we could do with them and uh, or where we could go put them if we thought that that had anything to do with the years going forward. So uh, I'll never forget that part either. You know, they're like handling your, handing your ring. You're like, oh man, this is unbelievable. You know, it's like, hey, uh, you know, go take that and stick it up, you know, and it's like, ah, all right, thanks coach. You know, appreciate it. Glad, glad we won the first one in 50 something years like my first season in Alabama nine years ago, people don't remember that we lost to ULM. Do you even know what that stands for? <laughs> University of Louisiana Monroe. And it was the most humiliating loss I think I've ever experienced. We turned the ball over seven times, we played horrible, we had guys suspended for the game for behavior issues. All the things that we were trying to do to establish a program seemed to unwind you know, in this particular game. So this was a humiliating defeat. So after this, I always have to talk to the team. I have to go in and speak to the press, which I got hammered, you know, that day. Um, I do a TV show, a radio show. So do all these things. I'm about as low as I've ever been ever in my professional career after this humiliating defeat. So I finally, two hours or so after the game, I get in my car, doesn't have any gas in the car. So now all of a sudden I'm gonna to have to stop and get gas and I just wanna get home and hide. So I'm on my way home, I stop at one of these self-serve deals and I go in and pump my gas, I go in and pay for the guy, pay for the gas and I have my LSU national championship ring on because this is the first year we've been at, uh, at Alabama. And when I'm paying the guy, he says, man, what, what, what is that? I said, well, that's, that's a national championship ring. And I said, we're going to do the same thing here at Alabama. And he said, we'll never do it as long as that Nick, Nick Saban's a coach. So. <laughs> and look, guys, if you're an average player, you want to be left alone, all right, because you want to be able to slide by. If you're a good player, you want to be coached. If you're a great player, you want the coach to tell you the truth every day. Did I hustle on that play? Did I make the right read? Did I play the guy with the right leverage? You want to know every play, because you know why? They want to be perfect. Everybody here makes a choice to do one of those three things. All right, so everybody up here, let's go. We need everybody to choose to do the things they need to do to be as good as they can be. Team on three. One, two, three, team. Come on, Holy let's go. Come on, break on the ball. Got one guy breaking on the ball. Now, Terrell, run the road again. Damn it, it's cut. You don't have anybody to flat. And I'm going to tell you what, if I had a barometer up your ass to say whether you were giving effort or not, it was about 50%. It's all about that boy that called me Poppy. So I'ma keep making that paper, copy You squares can never stop me, y'all triangles to play me Two lines for you fuck boys, pause that, now play me Right from where I left off, let's get back to that real shit, that's it Look at the details! Oh!